Good morning or good afternoon. Thank you for being here the second day of my workshop. Um, those of you who were not here yesterday, my name is Jessica Leon and I'm a breast amateur from the United States. I currently work at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. And for the next hour and a half, I will have the privilege of uh, showing you some MRI cases. I have questions in between. I know we don't have an audience response system per se, but anybody who wants to raise their hands or speak up, please feel free to do so. So I'll just review a little bit on the indications of breast MR in the clinical setting. The extent of disease, that is to decide how much disease there is in the patient already diagnosed with breast cancer, whether it's multifocal, multicentric, contralateral, whether it involves the skin or the pectoralis muscle. Residual or recurrent disease, new adjuvant chemo re chemotherapy response, which has been talked about a lot in this course uh, conference, particularly as it is very clinically oncology based. Uh, evaluation of the patient with axillary lymphadenopathy of unknown primary. The so called problematic mammogram to solve some mammographic challenges, such as one view asymmetries. And then lastly, high risk screening. These are the high uh, indications. So I'm going to start, jump right ahead to the case one, uh, which is a 62-year-old woman who presented with a palpable lump. So if you take a look, I'm always going to, as much as possible, have mammographic and ultrasound correlation because I really believe that MR is a, a multimodality. It's best when it's considered in the multimodality setting. So here is her mammogram, palpable lump. What do you think? Do you see any abnormalities? So what we're looking for in mammograms for cancer are mass, calcifications, architecture distortion, and asymmetries. So I think we readily see something here in the breast on the right-hand side. Okay. Definition of a mass is something you see in two projections or more, densest in the uh, center and with convex margins. Um, we, I haven't shown you the CC view yet, so I'm going to show you the CC view next. But before we do that, you can see that on the other side, you can see that there's an abnormality, right? Okay. So that is uh, shown in the yellow circle as opposed to this one, which is shown in the blue asterisk. This one is a, a I'm going to show you the other projection, which is consistent with the mass. But you can see that the shape is oval and the margins are circumscribed. So those are just relative benign terms. So I'm just going to tell you that this mass on this side of the screen, on the right side of the screen or the left breast, has been there for many years been stable and has been shown previously to be a cyst at ultrasound. Okay. So here there are her CC mammograms. Do we have a correlate to the initial finding in the yellow circle on this side? Yes, which is right here, correct? And here is the corresponding um, finding on the outer CC breast, which is the cyst. So let's look at the uh, left side of the screen. These are spot compression views. So we're looking at shape and margin. Shape, I would say, irregular. Margin, perhaps microlobulated, perhaps speculated. So are those are kind of suspicious term. What do you do next? Ultrasound, I heard someone said, or many, several of you say. So ultrasound. So is this a benign cyst? No. Uh, virus 3, solid mass. So more suspicious finding. I heard uh, many of you, I see many of you shaking your head. So I would say this is irregular. This is heterogeneous with both epigenic and hypoechoic components. Looks suspicious, right? Okay. So this uh, biopsy was an invasive ductal carcinoma. But the point of showing these cases is to show the MR correlations. And here is the MR that was performed for staging in her case. And number two, she also it happens to be a high-risk patient. So she wanted to be staged uh, for the contralateral breast and everything all together. So this is a post-GAD image now. So what you're seeing is it's, um, it's a bright is enhancement, and this in the on um, this side of the screen uh, shows that this is a correlation to what you saw in the yellow circle. Okay. So this is a mass at MR. I would say it's an enhancing mass. It's irregular margin. And when you look higher up, however, in the ipsilateral breast cells for cancer, what else do you see? Do you see something in the post-GAD image? Yes. And what is this? Is this a mass or is this not mass enhancement? Not mass enhancement. The single best descriptor, I know you got beautiful lectures yesterday by our colleagues here. 
I would say that's linear. Maybe that's my best description, very analogous to the terms we have for distribution for calcifications. And that uh, a biopsy was DCIS, and this gives it multifocal disease. Okay? But we haven't finished yet. How about the other side? Okay? Which, remember that cyst that I showed you that was shown in the blue asterisk, the blue star? Well, there it is. Okay? That's the cyst. It does not enhance the post gap, which makes sense because it is a cyst. But notice what's next to it, right? You see it enhancing. Here's the T2 or the steroid image showing it hyper intense, consistent with cystic, consistent with this being a cyst. But next to it, you have this structure or this finding. And this is what it looks like on a sagittal view right here. Here is the cyst, and here is that enhancement. This photographically enlarged in the axial and the sagittal. Okay. So again, morphology shape, just going back to the basics, suspicious. Okay. So this is something worrisome on the other side now. My question to you is, what is the most appropriate next step? Is it second look ultrasound, an ultrasound guided core biopsy? Is it ultrasound guided cyst aspiration? Tomo, why not, because we love it, okay? A tomo guided core biopsy or stereotactic guided core? One, I heard. None? One, okay. Thank you, Dr. Ashra, for playing along with the game. Okay, second look, ultrasound and ultrasound guided core, is, it would be the answer. I didn't put MR biopsy there on purpose, just because, you know, I don't want to start a controversy in order to go through the cases. Whether you go directly to MR, whether you go to second look ultrasound first, is a little bit debatable. And nowadays, whether you would try to do second look tomo, I don't know. But certainly, ultrasound is certainly the easiest way to go about doing this. And I reviewed some literature back in 2011 on the use of second look ultrasound. And my take home point to you for the purpose of this workshop is that uh, if you have access to it, go ahead and do it. And what's the chance of seeing something? Well, the bigger the MRI lesion, okay, the more chance of seeing it. That makes sense. Uh, the more likely the MRI lesion is to be cancer, that is the BIRADS-5 or BIRADS-4C MRI lesion is more likely to see an ultrasound with a correlate. Okay, that's also kind of intuitive. But I think the single take, take home point is of the lesion type. Mass, it's more readily seen than non-mass enhancement. And what I mean by that is that if you have a one centimeter enhancing mass at MR versus a three centimeter area of non-mass enhancement at MR, you're more likely to see the one centimeter mass even though it is smaller, okay? So I think we have kind of an irregular mass here and indeed this is the ultrasound correlate, non-parallel taller than, uh, or taller than wide, shadowing, you know, all the suspicious terms. And this happens to be the cyst next to it, ultrasound got a core unit invasive ductal carcinoma. We of course clipped it, and here's the clip. Remember the blue star? Okay, that is the cyst. And this is the clip right there in the lower outer breast. I'll, sh I'll show it to you bigger, uh, which is here. Okay, everybody see the clip? My point is, you, you don't really see this cancer on mammogram. So I would call it a mammographically occult contralateral disease adjacent to a cyst. To kind of show you the power of MR detection of disease in this patient who has a contralateral multifocal disease. Okay. Case two. She is a 67-year-old woman who presented with palpable lymphadenopathy. Okay. So remember, one of the indications is to evaluate patients with uh, axillary lymphadenopathy of unknown primary. It, if it's a woman, you don't have a cancer elsewhere, it's actually good that it's in the breast because that would uh, give a better prognosis as opposed to stage 4 metastatic disease from a more distant organ like the ovaries. Okay, palpable, and she had more than axillary, she actually had super clav lymphadenopathy, that was palpable also. So you're kind of thinking locally advanced disease. So I'm going to tell you it is in this breast on the left hand side of the screen. Okay, so focus there. Yes, I know you see a clip. That is from old biopsy, let's say five years ago. That was benign, okay? So, all right, here's the CC view. Do you see any abnormalities? I see some of you pointing, but I'm not expecting you to. Okay, this is a sort of an MR teaching case. And I would say the breast is what? Heterogeneously dense, you know, on the dense side. So a lot of disease can be hidden. So these are her MR images, axillary uh, images I'm showing you. Do we, what do we see? Okay, you see a lymph node here in the axio and here in the sagittal, right? What you expect lymph nodes to look like? They could be rim enhancing. Okay, they're obviously bigger than what you normally see. How big is big? 
a little bit of a gestalt. Okay? You can have three centimeter nodes to have a normal fatty halim and be okay, and have an eight millimeter node. That's not okay if it's round and lost of normal fatty halim. This is morphologically abnormal, that you don't have the normal fatty halim. It's palpable, it's big, you know, all the, all the uh, suspicious findings you would expect. Oh, the light is bright, is that on purpose? Can we turn it down a little bit, please? Okay, um, I'll go on for the sake of time. This is uh, gadolinium enhanced now, and we're looking for the disease in the ipsilateral breast, which is going to be this breast on the left-hand side of the screen. So again, mass, not mass enhancement. Easy, right? Biorad is supposed to make your life easier. Okay. Um, do we have a mass? Yes, here it is, right? So, you know, a mass like any other mass you see. And there it is. And where is the correlation on the sagittal? I'm a traditionalist. I like to look at the other view, uh, train, you know, classically in mammography. But uh, here it is on the sagittal, even on the MR. And this area, this lesion actually showed quite a bit of washout contrast, type 3. So that this on the sagittal in our protocol is a delayed image, and a lot of the contrast is actually washed out. And it is actually here. But you see this? Okay. What do you call this enhancement characteristic? Homogeneous, heterogeneous, rim, kind of rimish, right? That's my term, not a virus term, rimish. Okay? But it's rim enhancing is what I'm trying to say. And this is the clip from the previous benign core biopsy that she had. So I think that's going to be our culprit. So we're going to try to biopsy it. How? Well, you know what, what I'm going to say, this is a companion case to the one I just showed you, which is the second look ultrasound. There it is. Do we see an abnormality? You know, you can imagine the patient is very upset. She has probably locally advanced disease. So we try really hard, okay? It just looked hell genius, you know? We didn't, I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but I know like from the MR where it is geographically. Okay? So I thought somewhere here-ish. I did put a needle in it. I thought this area is a little bit shadowing. What did you think I get? Stromal fibrosis, true story. Is that concordant? Has rat path concordance been achieved? And this is a review of all the principles of breast imaging. I'm going to say no because of the presence of ipsilateral lymphadenopathy that's proven to be cancer. No because of the washout kinetics and MR that I talked about of that lesion. Yes, because stromal fibrosis may be mass like at ultrasound. Or yes, because the biopsy needle was seen to traverse the mass at ultrasound in real time. Okay, the answer, the best answer here is number one. Okay. While uh, this is also no, washout kinetics doesn't mean cancer. It could be benign, because that's not as good an answer. And the answer really should be no and not yes. And while these statements are true, stromal fibrosis can't, yes, it can be mass like. The biopsy needle uh, seen in real time is good to show that you did good sampling, but that doesn't uh, answer the question. Okay, the question is no, rat path concordance has not been achieved. So we're going to go back. Now in retrospect, I, w I went for the heterogeneous area, but perhaps there was something, you know, adjacent to it. So upon second look, this seems to be more the correlate, and indeed, remember the morphology of this? You can see that? Okay, that mass? So here it is, the second look ultrasound. You almost see this, I don't know how to describe it, a little bit irregular, but a little bit oval, with a little bit of linear extension or angular margins with duct extension. All those are sonographic terms that Stafros originally described as being malignant. And this, you know, was kind of um, uh, deceiving because it showed posterior acoustic enhancement. So I was thinking like the dirty cyst, you know, like the one we just saw. But when I look back on the MR, well, there was no cyst in that region. Okay, so all that putting two, 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 two and two together equals four. It's like detective work. And uh, this is actually the sonographic correlate. But by this time, you get a little gun shy and went on to say, okay, let's just MR core to be sure once and for all. Uh, but so here it is, the MRI guided core biopsy images. This here is the clip from the benign biopsy. This is the enhancing mass. It's not as pretty as diagnostic images because these are our um, biopsy images, shorter sequences. Um, and here is the trocar, and then you have a bit of a post or post biopsy fluid collection slash hematoma there. There's the initial diagnostic lesion. This yield the diagnosis of invasive vector carcinoma. So that's how we worked out that case. Okay? Case number three, 55-year-old screening. So
So, subtle. Big room, lots of you in the room. Thank you for sh showing up. Um, so I don't expect you to see cows. I'm going to tell you it's not a mass. Asymmetry, architecture distortion. Some of you saw really subtle cancers earlier. This is subtle. I don't expect you to see it from again far away. But what, what do you see as an additional associated body? I see somebody pointing. Maybe that. Does that have normal notes are incredibly tricky? Was it there before? You know, we're partially including it, I'm not sure. But what I did see was this and this, okay? That kind of bugged me, bothered me a little. But any one day, that is more likely to be some Asian artifact and not a cancer. But this finding here, possible architecture distortion, in conjunction with this possible abnormal lymph node, say that, okay, it's good enough for me. Um, am I am I addressing your question, Dr. Jerry? You're pointing something else. Oh, like here? Here. Okay. Okay. I think I love this because it shows the classic patterns of reading, right? Do I do I say there is not a finding there? Uh, let me just say, for the sake of the time again, that this is stable. Let me just say, you close up. This looks like tissue. You know, but I see your point. Look at any one image. You know, I'm trying. To, I'm not trying to. This is not supposed to be an eye test. Uh, to see how much, you, how, how small you can see from the back of the room, but really more principles. I don't deny it, that that could be something. Let's say I compressed it and it's spots up. Okay, so we're talking about this finding here, architect. But you're right, that mammography is very much subjective and very much of an art, you know, um, in, in every single case. But I'm kind of showing my train of thoughts during this case, and this was possible architecture distortion. We recalled her, by Route Zero. She came back. And this is the uh, view that we obtained at diagnostic mammography. Do we have an abnormal node? Yes, I think this is. It looks different from the others. Again, dense. I find that the density of it, meaning how bright it is, often is helpful. Of course, it will change, you know, pore size, all the usual criteria. And uh, there is the question area before. We did some spot compression on the CC where I thought I saw the best. Is this gone? Oh, I don't know. Not quite gone, but not quite there. It still bothered us. Um, of course, we wanted to do ultrasound. Okay, that's the first step. And of course, didn't see anything, because otherwise it would be a little bit less interesting. No sonographic correlate. Okay. But this is the node. The node is really what pushed us toward doing more and more. Okay. This is the ultrasound of the node. This is cortical thickening. There was some hilum that was fatty on ultrasound, but not normal. And this is definitely cortical thickening. This is the same node in the uh, transverse view, cutting through the cortex. You can see it, now you can biopsy it. We did, ultrasound core. You did the diagnosis of adenocarcinoma, ER and PR positive, consistent with a breast primary. So we're gonna try to find the breast primary now. Based on evidence-based guidelines, the most appropriate modality to be utilized for problem solving at this point is one tomo, two MR, three automated whole breast ultrasound, or four positron emission mammography, or PEM. I know that many of you do excellent work here in contrast mammography, and let's throw contrast mammography in there, okay, as, the, uh, as another choice. So the key word to this question, if you want to care about getting these questions right, um, there is well, I was going to say, I wish I had some chocolate so I could give up prices, but I just have some cough drops, okay, if anyone wants any. Okay. <laughs> Evidence-based guidelines, okay. So the most literature is what I'm trying to say, and that's clearly MR, okay. And perhaps we will have someday literature on, on TOMO, literature on the contrast work that you're doing. So I would really want to encourage you know, each and every one of you to publish your results. So I did review in 2010 the MR evaluation of uh, mammographic and clinical equivo equivocal findings. So the summary of the review is to say that MR may be used in certain settings, architectural distortion, uh, that's seen in one view, one view asymmetries, etc. Not so much to tell you it is a cancer, I mean, it's great when they can tell you that, but really to exclude cancer, okay? Uh, MR can be used in some settings, quite a bit of settings, but not every setting. I know that's not a very satisfactory answer, but that's kind of where we are at right now. The important point is that if you have a mask or calcifications that you are suspicious of, and then you can biopsy, just biopsy. Don't use MR in that setting. So just to show you the rest of this case, this is a stir image. I'm just trying to show you the node. It's bright, hyper intense. T1 non fat cell, you can see the asymmetry, uh, excuse me, the asymmetric appearance in the axillary area. This is the abnormal node. 
And then this is the pre and post contrast of the node, just to show you that nodes do enhance, okay? That doesn't tell you it's benign or malignant. And when you do the uh, curves, you're gonna see type 3 wash out not be frequently. Again, it doesn't tell you it's benign or malignant. It's really everything put together. And this case suggests we know it's malignant because we biopsy it, and we were highly suspicious even before we biopsied it. There's the clip, okay? And then we want to look for the cancer inside the breast parenchyma. And it turns out that uh, we want to look in the upper, slightly inner aspect, because that's what the mammogram led us to. Okay, remember a little bit inner, this architecture distortion. And when you do that, you see this. This is two separate post gas slices. <coughs> and here is the photographic enlargement on the bottom. Everybody see architecture distortion? Yeah? And everybody see a little mass here, right? Okay. And that is your little cancer. Small but powerful. Okay, so don't uh, don't dismiss the small lesions, 5 millimeter, grade 3, invasive ductal, which gave rise to uh, nodal metastases. Okay, so this was a subtle cancer, and that's how we used the MR to assess the situation. Case 4, 49, screening. Okay, baseline. I'm going to tell you baseline is negative, by rats 1 negative. But there is some something. It was red as negative, but that is what we call what? Focal asymmetry, perhaps? Baseline. You could have recalled that. This radiologist chose not to. But when you go from baseline to year two to year three, everybody see the change? Okay. So these are all MLO views. Year three, someone said, oh, that looks bigger than year one or baseline. Let's look at what the CC view looks like, okay? Oh, I don't have this, all the CC views from all, all the years lined up for the sake of time. But year three, we recalled her because of this you know, change or this perceived change. And 90 degree lateral, MLO, and CC. This is our diagnostic evaluation. Just to review some basics of mammography, this is a lateral lesion in the outer breast. So the mnemonic that we have to remember for all of our trainees out there is that lateral is L, L, uh, is L stands for lead, and lead is heavy, so it will fall, go lower, when you go from outer, from the oblique to the 90 degree view, okay? As opposed to if you had a lesion in the medial breast, medial is M, M is muffins, and muffins will rise, and it goes from higher when you go from the oblique to the lateral, okay? So this is a lateral lesion, so it drops when you go from the oblique to the lateral basic principles of our triangulation. So we have something now. You know where it is, you know the size, what are you going to do next? Ultrasound. So there's the ultrasound. Do you have a correlate? Maybe, maybe not. This looks like a little cyst with debris. Too small, okay? Location-wise, I'm going to tell you it's good because, you know, you, you started it that way by doing the targeted MR, okay? So we did ultrasound core and we got fibrosis why did we do ultrasound core? We thought patients on the table, easiest to start right there. Okay, fibrocystic change. Is that concordant? Ask yourself that for every biopsy case we do. Let's look at the clip. Everybody see the clip there? That's pretty good, right? Okay, so it is, seems to be in the same location. And here's the clip out here. Is that good? Well, it's a little bit on the lateral edge, okay, but not. Uh, not terrible, okay. Um, and, uh, okay, so here is the MR. Now, why did we go to MR? Because we want completely sure it's concordant. We didn't want to really take out such a big area. Patient wanted to do something else first, and here's the MR. Everybody see the clip? Okay, so do we have an enhancing correlate? The answer is, yeah, we do. You know, this is a focal enhancement, maybe because some of you call it enhancing mass. But let's look at this some more, okay. When we look at the more uh, medial aspect, remember the clip is in the lateral aspect? More medial aspect, you see these. Okay, I'm going to show it bigger to you, which is, looks like this. So you kind of have enhancing foci, you know, within this uh, either non mass enhancement, uh, I'll call it. So, you know, my overall feeling is that this was not going to be cancer, but I don't think I've answered the question. So I said, well, this is not completely discordant. Concordance has not yet been achieved. I sound like a lawyer, right? Or maybe a politician, okay? And so I'm gonna use my MR to guide my needle toward these enhancing foci within this non-mass enhancement. So MRI got a core, what did it show? Question. Most likely benign, 
course, it could have been cancer, it could have been DCIS, it could have even been invasive. But let's say it was benign. What do you think the most likely benign diagnosis for this patient is? Papilloma, mucosal radio scar, or PASH? Somebody beat me to the punch. Great, thank you, which is PASH. Pseudo-MGO, but it's stromal hypoplasia. Sounds very cool, okay? When you go to a party, you know, on the weekend, you can say, oh, do you know what PASH is? It's pseudo-angiomatous stromal hypoplasia. And that's the answer, okay? Which leads me, if you allow me a little bit of time, a couple of minutes, on a segue into asymmetries, a, a little bit away from MR, just because I love asymmetries so much. So asymmetries, we're gonna talk about, we didn't have time particularly yesterday, the fifth edition of biomedicine has four types. There's the asymmetry, global asymmetry, focal asymmetry, and then there's the developing asymmetry, okay? These are the four types listed in BioRads. I personally think the asymmetry is best called one view asymmetry. I lobbied for that in the BioRads committee. They said, no, we don't like it. We want asymmetry only, okay? So, but the word asymmetry is really a one view finding, is what I'm trying to say. Dr. Sickles, uh, a long time ago, 1998, for some of you were born, did a study of one-view findings and basically found that one-view findings um, are about 3% in the screening population. And a uh, majority of them are going to be summation artifacts, over 80%, superimposition of fibroglandular structure. So remember, you don't want to have too many false positives in order to make your screening program work, right? So when you see a one-view asymmetry, statistically speaking, that's not going to be a cancer, and statistically speaking, that's not even gonna be a cyst or a fibroadenoma, but it's going to be summation artifact only. And the trick is, of course, to, to learn, to recognize them and not having to do additional workup. But let's look at a case that we did that, the one-view asymmetry. I'm gonna go quickly in terms of time. It is there, so we can go back to the MR. Spot compression, maybe something, right? Okay, so I'm gonna recall this patient, and I did. And here's a CC, I didn't see anything, and that's the lesson here. If you didn't see anything on the corolla, you can be fairly comfortable that this is one view. Now, this is all very much case dependent, because obviously you can have one view cancers. So this is not to me to say, oh, you never have to recall these, but this is all part of your thinking process as you go through each case and as you go through each, have uh, increasing experience over time. But we did recall her in this case, this is a spot compression view, we don't see anything in this region, and here is the enlargement photographically of that area, initial compression, same area, uh, summation artifacts, superimposition of fibroblastial structures, okay? One case of that over 80% uh, group. And, but of course the challenge is, you could have some cancers, and when you do have cancers, this is from Dr. Sickle's uh, study from 1998, the lobular is disproportionately represented, and I'm gonna show you this is a lobular case. There is a cancer in this breast, and it's best seen on, I think, the CC view. This is a prospective case. This caught our eye, okay, right here, in the inner aspect. Uh, we repeated it. We recalled her and we repeated it. Do we see it again? There, okay. So this is a photographic enlargement of it. Do you see uh, additional morphology now? Speculations, right? That's always a bad word to us, you know, kind of like taxes or nationalized healthcare to some people, okay? Always a bad word to us. Um, and uh, spot compression use. This looks like it's trying to get away, but when we move the paddle here in spot compression, it kind of persisted. So then we try to find it in the other view, the MLO. Uh, we did compression use in a, this part, obviously, because it is dense, that's the upper breast. We did upper, we did kind of mid and lower, didn't definitely see a correlate, and I did something that Dr. Sickles would not endorse, which is going to ultrasound without really finding it in the other view, but we found this, okay? So easy, this is uh, uh, a Birax 5 type of sonographic finding, right? Really suspicious looking, or as my eight-year-old niece would